Hello and welcome to my talk about a comparison of Sickle, OpenCL, CUDA and OpenMP for massively parallel support vector machine classification on multi-vendor hardware. My name is Marcel Breyer and I'm currently working at the University of Stuttgart. So why could such a comparison be of any use? Here we have a list of eight parallel programming languages with a graph showing the number of mentions in papers. Here we see, for example, that CUDA is mentioned the most, followed by OpenMP, OpenCL and MPI. However, this list isn't exhaustive. For example, there are other parallel programming languages like HIP, COCOS, Raja or even the parallel STL in C++ not mentioned here. So now the question arises, which language to use if you want to target, for example, NVIDIA GPUs or CPUs or both. In order to answer this question, we investigate our library. We implemented the support vector machine using different backends, namely OpenCL, OpenMP and CUDA as the three most mentioned parallel programming languages and SICL as a fourth as a rather new parallel programming language. And inside our library, those backends are used to implement a rather standard problem, namely matrix vector multiplication inside a CG algorithm. At the end, with this standard workload, we want to give a recommendation on which backend to use when. As an example application for our comparison, we used an implementation of a support vector machine. Support vector machines are used in supervised machine learning for binary classification in their original formulation. In our example, we have two classes, the red circles and the blue squares. Without loss of generalization, we assume their labels to be minus one and plus one. Now, if we want to classify those classes, we can simply separate them using a hyperplane. However, support vector machines do not calculate a random hyperplane like those two here, they calculate the hyperplane which separates both classes the best, which tries to maximize this margin. This hyperplane is then called decision boundary. And those data points lying on the margin of the decision boundary are called support vectors, hence the name support vector machine. Now, if we want to classify a new data point using this classifier, we simply need to calculate on which side of the decision boundary our new data point lies. In order to do so, we simply have to calculate a scalar product of the new data point and the normal vector w to the decision boundary together with an addition of the bias, which indicates the distance to the origin. Since we are only interested on which side of the decision boundary our point falls, it is enough to get the sign for our result, since we assume the classes to have labels minus one and plus one. So in our example, the data point X would belong to the class blue squares. However, normal support vector machines have one major problem. They solve a convex quadratic programming problem and the state-of-the-art algorithm to do so is sequential minimal optimization. As the name suggests, sequential minimal optimization is inherently sequential algorithm. So many SVM implementations now modify the normal SVM approach to exploit some sort of parallelism. However, even then, the modified SMO approaches are not suited for massively parallel modern hardware like, for example, GPUs. So we used another formulation of the normal SVMs called Least Squares Support Vector Machines or in short LS SVMs. They reformulate the original problems of inequalities to only have equalities and if our system only has equalities, it boils down to solving a system of linear equations. And luckily enough, massively parallel algorithms are known to solve such systems of linear equations. For example, the conjugate gradient algorithm we also use in our implementation.
Now I want to talk about a few implementation details of our library, which is called Parallel Least Square Support Vector Machine, or in short, PLSSVM. PLSSVM is written in modern C17. It is possible to switch between single and double precision floating point types via a single template parameter. Every backend that we implemented and every target platform we support is selectable at runtime. You don't have to choose which backend or target to use at compile time. You can simply switch it at runtime using, for example, a comment line switch. We parallelized the matrix vector multiplication in the CG algorithm because this is the most computational extensive part of the whole algorithm. In addition, for the linear kernel, we support multi GPU execution. It is a drop in replacement for the most widely known SVM implementation, libSVM. However, currently only binary classification and dense calculations are supported. That is, we do not support multi class classification out of the box. And if you want to use sparse data sets, they are at first internally by our library converted to a dense representation, filling in zeros where necessary. We implemented, as already mentioned, four different backends, OpenMP, Qtar, OpenCL, and Sickle. In addition, a fifth backend is already implemented, but not investigated in this presentation, namely a HIP backend. Since our OpenMP backend diverges highly from our other implementations, it does not share its CG implementation. For our GPU backends, CUDA, OpenCL, and Sickle, we implemented one CG and use it for all three backends to reduce code duplication potential bugs. In addition, for the Sickle backend, we implemented two different kernel variations for the matrix vector multiplications, namely the MD range kernel and the hierarchical kernel. At first, a few things about our OpenMP backend. Currently, we only support CPUs. We have no support for target offloading on GPUs. We only use directive-based constructs, so no OpenMP tasking constructs are used. And our OpenMP backend is not yet optimized to the same level as our GPU backends because our main focus lies on GPU execution. For the CUDA backend, we use several optimization techniques, blocking, caching, and petting. For example, petting to reduce branch divergence by removing ifs for boundary checks, and blocking and caching to exploit the memory hierarchies in modern GPUs. For example, block level caching between global and shared memory, and thread level caching between shared memory and registers. In addition, all Blocking sizes are changeable during compilation to fine-tune our implementation for specific hardware. We made sure that our CUDA code is ahead of time compiled instead of just in time during execution. For our OpenCL backend, we employed the same optimizations as in CUDA. In addition, we wrapped all OpenCL handles in C++ wrapper classes to reduce potential memory leaks, for example. We implemented custom floating point atomics since they are not standardized in OpenCL directly. However, in contrast to CUDA and later SQL, OpenCL does not use ahead of time compilation. It only uses JIT compilation during runtime. In addition, we implemented a custom OpenCL kernel binary caching scheme. We needed to do this because the OpenCL built-in caching failed on some hardware platforms, as we will see later. In addition, our Sickle backend again uses the same optimizations as CUDA. We currently support DPC++ and HipSickle. Other SICL implementations like Compute CPP, TriCycle, and NeoCycle are currently not supported and therefore not investigated in this presentation. We ensured that our DPC++ implementation uses ahead of time compilation and, as already mentioned, we implemented two versions of the same kernel for the matrix vector multiplication. The ND range kernel, which is directly comparable to the CUDA and OpenCL notations, and a SICL exclusive hierarchical kernel formulation, which was necessary to get acceptable performance 
using Hipsicle on CPUs, which is a known limitation for Hipsicle. Next, I want to talk about our achieved results. Here we have all hardware we used for our results. Seven GPUs, four from NVIDIA, one from AMD and two from Intel. And five different CPUs from AMD and Intel respectively. However, due to time restrictions, we will now focus on four different hardware platforms. Namely one data center GPU from NVIDIA, the NVIDIA A100 and one consumer GPU RTX 3080. Additionally, we will show the results for the AMD Radeon Pro 7 GPU and for an Intel Core i9-109020X CPU. All our runtimes were performed with double precision floating point types. Our datasets were synthetic datasets created with sklearn's make classification. All runs were performed such that we achieved a uh, accuracy of 97% or the accuracy converged in the first three decimal decades. In either case, we had a hard runtime limit of at most 10 minutes. All reported times were average times per single CG iteration. So it doesn't matter if one dataset needed 100 CG iterations, another dataset only needed three CG iterations to reach the desired accuracy. At first, I want to talk about the NVIDIA A100 and RTX 380 GPUs. In this case, we fixed the number of features to 4096 and varied the number of data points. As we see, we have the same overall behavior on both GPUs. At first, the runtimes do not significantly increase until approximately 2 to the power of 9 data points. In both cases, after that, the runtimes for all backends start to increase. The good thing is that the runtime increase is the same for all backends. All backends have a slope of 4, which can be explained by the fact that doubling the number of data points quadruples the number of matrix entries for the linear system of equations. One difference between both GPUs is that on the NVIDIA A100 GPU, the differences between the backends is more pronounced than on the RTX 380 GPU. Here, the only real outliers are both SQL implementations with the hierarchical kernel formulations. Another outlier is HIPSQL, but only on the NVIDIA A100 GPU, where it has the drastically higher static overhead than any other backend. However, we currently do not know why this is the case. Now we will focus on the NVIDIA A100 GPU. Here, CUDA is the fastest backend, followed by OpenCL. Then DPC++ is the next fastest backend for small datasets. If the datasets become greater than 2 to the power of 13, HIPSQL becomes faster. However, the hierarchical kernel formulations of both SQL implementations are slower than their respective and range kernel formulations. In general, DPC++ on NVIDIA GPUs was slower than HIPSQL because of a bug where the atomic functions were not correctly inlined when using DPC++. However, this bug has been fixed after we measured our runtimes. We also profiled our kernels on the NVIDIA A100 GPU using NVIDIA's NSIGHT Compute with CUDA and with HIPSQL and DPC++. This was possible because both compile down to PTX code, which can be used in NSIGHT Compute. The results showed that all four profiled kernel used nearly the same number of FMR operations. However, while CUDA only used global and shared memory, the SQL backends used additionally local memory. This increased the number of load and store instructions drastically. However, the increase in load and store instructions was even larger for the hierarchical kernel formulation than for the ND range formulation. The roofline model generated with NSIGHT Compute showed that the hierarchical kernel formulations tend to be way more memory bound than their ND range counterparts. Now we have a look at the uh, AMD Radeon Pro 7 GPU. This time we show data point and feature scaling 
For a data point scaling, we again fix the features to 4096 features. And for the feature scaling, we fix the number of data points to 32,768. Again, the overall behavior is the same as for the NVIDIA GPUs. We have at first no runtime increase, also in the feature scaling plot. Only after 2 to the power of 9 data points or features, the runtime start to increase. Again, the slopes for the data point scalings are 4 for all available backends. Here, OpenCL was the fastest backend, followed by DPC++ with the D-range kernel formulation. Interestingly, this time HIPCL in D-range and hierarchical had virtually no difference. If we recall the runtimes for the NVIDIA GPUs, there the hierarchical kernel formulation was slower than the D-range formulation. Overall, the general performance on the AMD GPU was worse than to be expected if we compare it to NVIDIA GPUs with approximately the same hardware. This could be explained by the fact that we did not fine-tune the blocking sizes for the AMD GPU. However, to be sure, we have to do further investigations. Now, if we look at the Intel Core i9 CPU, at first we have to note that now the number of features and data points for data point and feature scaling is smaller than on the GPUs. However, with the data point scaling, again, at first the runtimes do not increase until 2 to the power of 8 data points, after that the runtimes start to increase. For the feature scaling, this time the runtimes start to increase starting with 16 features. The first thing we have to notice is that this time HIPCL's in the range formulation is drastically slower than its hierarchical counterpart. On average it was 24 times slower, however the highest speed up we gained with the hierarchical formulation was nearly 120 compared to its in the range counterpart and that's exactly the reason why we implemented the hierarchical kernel formulation in the first place what's also to note is that this time while all backends have the same slopes as on the gpus openmp has a slightly steeper slope uh, one reason for this is that our OpenMP backend is simply not as optimized as our GPU backends. Looking at runtimes, this time DPC++ is the fastest, except on very, very small datasets where OpenMP is faster. It's followed by OpenMP for smaller datasets. After 2 to the power 11 data points, OpenCL becomes faster. The next fastest backend is HIPCL with the hierarchical kernel formulation, followed by DPC++ with the hierarchical formulation and far away HIPCL in D-range. Some additional observations we were unable to show here directly were that the results on the NVIDIA P100 and GTX 1080 Ti GPUs were virtually identical to the A100 and RTX 380 GPUs. The overall behavior on the Intel GPUs was the same as on the NVIDIA GPUs. OpenCL was dramatically faster on the Iris XE Max GPU compared to DPC++. In general, the overall behavior on the CPUs were nearly identical. And one thing to notice was that on every hardware platform we investigated, the DPC++ hierarchical kernel formulation was strictly slower than its in range counterpart, showing that DPC++ has still potential to optimize its hierarchical kernel invocation type. As a last result, I want to talk about the OpenCL JIT compilation overhead. This compilation overhead was not present in the previously shown plots because those plots only show the runtimes for a single CG iteration and the OpenCL JIT compilation took place way before the first CG iteration could start. We see that on the NVIDIA GPUs, the OpenCL JIT compilation is the fastest, way below one second. On the Iris XE Max GPU, the OpenCL JIT compilation takes nearly two and a half minutes, which is way too long. However, OpenCL provides us with some 
built-in caching. So if you execute the same code twice, in the second execution, the OpenCL JIT overhead should be smaller. This was also the case for the NVIDIA GPUs, where the second execution was actually faster. It was also the case to some extent for the CPUs. However, on the AMD GPU and Intel GPUs, especially on the Iris XE Max GPU, the OpenCL built-in caching capability failed completely. One reviewer mentioned that we could try to implement some custom caching, some manual caching using OpenCL's create program with binary function. So we tried this and surprise, it worked. Now with our manual caching approach, subsequent OpenCL invocations do not recompile the kernel codes, but use our cached versions which drastically decreases the run times for the Iris XE Max GPU to approximately 20 milliseconds from over two minutes, which is a nice result. However, it is not so nice that uh, OpenCL built-in caching capabilities fail on some hardware platforms. This now leads me to my conclusion. We contributed a new SVM implementation, namely PLS SVM, which uses multiple backends, namely OpenMP, QTA, OpenCL and SQL to be able to target hardware from different vendors, for example GPUs from NVIDIA, AMD and Intel as well as CPUs. Our library is completely open source and we are open for contribution. Additionally, we compared our backends using our library using a standard problem, namely the matrix vector multiplication in the CG algorithm. And based on our findings, I want now to give a short recommendation of which framework or which parallel programming language to use when. In our opinion, if you know ahead of time that you only have to target NVIDIA GPUs, it's still the best to use CUDA. Why? Because in our test, CUDA was the fastest on NVIDIA GPUs and CUDA simply works. We never had any problem setting up CUDA in our work and QDAS tooling, for example, NVIDIA Insight Compute is really, really good. If you only have to target CPUs, it's a good start to use OpenMP. Yes, it didn't have the best performance in our tests. However, it is way simpler to use compared to the alternatives like OpenCL and SQL, since you really only have to annotate for loops with a simple pragma to get parallel execution. However, if you have to target different vendor hardware, for example, GPUs from NVIDIA and AMD and additionally CPUs, you are stuck with OpenCL and SQL. So if you want to have the best performance possible, we would you recommend OpenCL. In our tests, OpenCL was still faster than SQL, except on the Intel CPUs where DPC++ was slightly faster. However, if you want to implement a new algorithm, a new problem from scratch, we still recommend SQL because it is way more user-friendly. You will get to your solution way faster using SQL than OpenCL. It is way more ergonomic to use compared to OpenCL because it is based on modern C++. If you choose SQL, you still can choose between different SQL implementations. We would recommend one API if you know beforehand that you have to target GPUs and CPUs and you want to implement your code only once using the ND range kernels because one API has sufficient performance when using ND range kernels on GPUs and CPUs. If you only care for GPUs, Hipsicle is the best option because it is faster than DPC++ and GPUs if you want to also target CPUs using Hipsicle, keep in mind that you have to implement a second version of your kernel using the hierarchical formulation to get best performance. However, the hierarchical formulation was slower on GPUs, so you have to keep that in mind. At the last point, I want to talk about the future direction of our library. For example, we can still further optimize our OpenMP backend to be more competitive with, for example, SQL and OpenCL. We can implement more 
backends like Cocos or OpenMP target offloading and compare it to all our already existing implementations. We can or we want to investigate other SQL implementations like Compute CPP, which is currently impossible because Compute CPP does not implement SQL 2020's Atomic Ref on the device side. And we want to investigate our performance on a completely different set of hardware, for example, FPGAs. In addition, current work in progress is a sparse CG implementation. This would allow us to use even larger data sets and speed up the computation of really sparse smaller data sets. In addition, support for distributed systems and multi-node execution via MPI is on the way. And we currently investigate the impact of mixed precision calculations and the potential usage of special machine learning hardware, for example, NVIDIA's Tensor Cores, to speed up our implementations. That's it, and thank you for your attention.